Hello everyone and welcome to the final episode of Let's Play Grand Theft Auto 3. We are still here at our Stone Island safe house, just running around aimlessly for whatever reason. Because we have some more missions to do for Asuka, who has relocated to the construction site. Wait, really? Yep. Is it like a show of power since that was the last place the uh, Colombian cartel was, I guess? Yeah, I guess that is basically it. So she and the Yakuza are now hanging around. Hmm. I guess my next question is, is Maria also here, or...? I think she is. Yeah, she is. Miguel seems to think I'm mistreating him. Still, he's revealed the extent to which Catalina fears your quest for revenge. She has three death squads dotted around Liberty, whose sole job is to hunt you down. Act as the bait and get the death squads to follow you to Pike Creek, where some of my men will be waiting for them. Okay, so Maria's not here yet, but she will be there. Okay, then. But yeah, we now have to lure some cartel death squads to a trap. So let's get to it. Is that is that uh, barrier bar ever up? No. Hmm. Okay. Right. So the first of these death squad is death squads is pretty close. Oh, there it is. So let's just lure them into this trap. Is the trap uh, over there in yellow? Yeah. Okay. You know, I'm kind of surprised this death squad isn't trying to do anything to uh, kill you. Yeah. I also think we should listen to this commercial because it's pretty good. Pogo the Monkey seems like an excellent mascot platformer slash action game. I would play wait, that. Wait, 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 hang on a second. Give, give me a sec, I gotta go check this out. PogoTheMonkey.com Need to go get myself Oh my god, it's still up. Yeah, yeah, it takes me to uh, rockstargames.com slash grandtheftall3 slash Pogo. <laughs> but I don't think anything's running. Oh. Oh well. You know what, uh, let's allow pop-ups and see what happens. Oh, hey, it, there's a little flash game. Wow, I had no idea there actually was one. I mean, I knew this site existed, but... Yeah, I don't know. But that's pretty cool. Is, is there an actual game to play, or...? No. Ah. Sadly not. Well, for anyone who was wondering, PogoTheMonkey.com still takes you somewhere legitimate. Okay, so it's not porn, so that's good at least. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess the idea is take the death squads up to this this place where they get ambushed by the Yakuza. Yeah, there's a bunch of Yakuza with M16, so they just totally slaughtered them. So here's the last one. 
What happens if you take out the uh, death squads yourself? I don't know. I don't think I've ever tried. Hmm. Ah, well. Also, I would think that Pogo the Monkey would be more of a 90s thing. I mean, 2001 was kind of... Mascot platformers weren't really a thing at that point anymore, more were they? At least not to that extent. Yeah, um... Let's see, Sonic Adventure 2 was out that year. Oh yeah, that, that was year. in 2001, I think. So, you still had the big one? But past that, I don't remember any other mascot platformers being a thing. Yeah, I guess it... I, I imagine most of them died with uh, Bubsy 3D. Yeah, well, I mean, we had some stuff on the N64. We had Buck Bumble. That wasn't a platformer, but it was a mascot thing. <laughs> I, I've i never heard of that one in my life, so... Uh... You should listen to its intro music, which is great. <laughs> Uh, also, there was, of course, stuff like Banjo and Conquer. Oh, yeah, I guess that's true, but those... By the way, I just love the fact that we're just talking about old mascot platformers instead of the game here, but... <laughs> well, I mean, there, there wasn't a whole lot else to say about that mission, really. That is true. Anyway, we are now in the Bulletproof Patriot, because we're gonna need it. Oh, boy. Miguel certainly has some of that famous Latin stamina. I'm quite exhausted. We underestimated Catalina's plans for Spank. It reaches far beyond the Yardies selling it on the street corners. The cartel have a front company, the Kappa Coffee House. They've been selling Spank through the street stalls. We have no choice but to put these drug stands out of operation. Smash them ah. to splinters! Ah. I am surprised that dude still has cheeks. Yeah, that is a good point. I mean, Asuka is a professional. Professional. She knows how to prolong the experience. I suppose that's true. For maximum pleasure, if you will. Oh, good. We're already smoking. <laughs> no, I guess we'll take this thing to the pay and spray because. We kind of need this to be in somewhat decent condition. So bulletproof, huh? It's bulletproof, yeah, but it's not crashproof. <laughs> so yeah, we are now supposed to drive around town and look for these cartel espresso stalls and then destroy them. And when we start destroying them, the timer will start rolling, so... You kind of have to scope them out first and find all the locations, or at least most of them, before you actually start destroying them. Oh, I see. S sidebar, the Yakuza aren't affiliated with any, uh, any, like, you know, coffee house brands, are they? Like, we're not about to see some, some, uh, green coffee cups floating around? I don't think so, no. Okay. Alright, so that's four. I think there's one more here in Staunton. And that would be that. So next we're gonna head back to Portland. And find the ones there, and then we will start to actually destroy them. So how many are there to uh, destroy? Uh... I... Don't rightly remember. I think there's ten, or okay. thereabouts. And one of them is in St. Mark's. Oh, boy. <laughs> I think the Mafia actually uses Uzis in this mission instead of the usual shotguns, but it's still not something that you want I mean, to yeah. be exposed to for any length of time. All right, so there's the first one. Okay, it's nine to destroy. We're close enough. And you don't actually have to ram into them with the car, it's actually possible to just blow them up, which is what I will start doing at some point. I was gonna say, like, if, if one crash was enough to do that, then 
Perhaps we should, uh, consider alternate means of, uh, destruction yeah, there. Yeah, i figure it out eventually. But of course, this is also faster, so, you know. You're not wrong. When you're getting gunned down the by the Mafia, you kind of don't want to linger. I thought your car was on fire for a sec. Well, thankfully not. We are not letting that happen at any point. Good. I, it would be a shame if the bulletproof car just went out in a fiery blaze because it crashed into a coffee cup. Well, weird things have happened. I can't refute that. So yeah, I did not actually go and check the ones in Shoreside because there's only a couple of them and there is to find. Okay. Although I was a little bit concerned because I had not played, tr played through this mission in like 15 years. <laughs> I think this was actually my second attempt at this because uh, on the first one I just kind of was confused as to what I was supposed to do because the stalls were not showing up on the map. I, I could totally understand that. So then I just realized that, oh yeah, you actually have to explore and find them first. Yeah, that seems like a weird um, way of going about this. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'm just spoiled by modern games. Let's be fair, I think a lot of people are. Don't know if that guy will ever be, though. <laughs> well, again, the medical facilities in Liberty City are very good at what they do. They, they must be, considering uh, how much goes on. Mm, that is true. That is true. I'm not sure why I decided to just drive all the way over here. I could have just... Well got out of the car and just blown this up from a distance, but there you go. I'm impressed that guy decided the best course of action to take against a guy holding a, a rocket launcher and pointing it right at his face is to uh, shoot at him with a tiny pistol. I think he might have been sampling some of his own merchandise. <laughs> that delicious, delicious espresso. Only the best stuff made from the best Colombian beans. But the game never actually goes into detail about what Spank is actually made of, but... I'm, ju I'm just gonna imagine it's, some it's something along the lines of Jet. That's possible. Honestly, that that's basically what I've been picturing it, uh, the, the whole LP as. Yeah, I think it's just supposed to be like cocaine, but but stronger or something. And the frame rate is having a moment again. The frame rate and the bit rate both. Bit rate is fine on my end. I mean, one of those is uh, completely out of the, the hands of the game, but yeah, ra rainy scenes are not uh, kind to uh, rendered video. Yeah, they're not. And there we have the final stall around the corner. Eventually. Yeah, it takes a while. Where's this? Like, what? What is this facility? Um, I didn't really get a good look at it. And that's the police station. I'm, I'm gonna guess it's kind of a mall then? I'm not entirely sure, I need to check. Yeah, it's probably not a big deal. Do we tighten it some more now or just wait for it to turn black and fall off? Give it a quick prod. Oh, what is that gooey yellow stuff? Hey, Pave! My handyman. I, I was bored, so I came over to keep a suka company. She's got the makings of a natural, this girl. She's managed to extract this little gem from our guest. 
There is a plane coming into Francis International in two hours' time. It is full of Catalina's poison. You can avoid airport security by getting a boat out to the runway light buoys and shooting the plane down on its approach. Collect the cargo from the debris and stash it. Oh, you be careful now, okay, baby? Now try the chili oil. Well, we are always careful, aren't we? Uh, more careful than she's being right now, I think? Mm, possibly. I was gonna say, like... Actually, you know what, never mind. Go on. Forget it. Go ahead. It, it's not important, just go on. So yeah, this mission is, in my opinion, probably the hardest in the game. At so least if you do it in the intended way. I was gonna say, so we're not taking the bulletproof thing for this? No, because that's not gonna help us. That's... Actually, you know, I just remember we are getting on a boat, so... Yeah, what we could do is we could drive to the airport and intercept the plane when it lands. Which would be a million times easier than what we are actually actually going to do here. Okay... So, let us get on this boat and wait for this plane to show up. But this is clearly the intended way to do this. Okay, any day now. Welcome to Shoreside Vale. Thank you. <laughs> They really didn't need that load screen, like, they, I can see right there from the bottom corner where we are. Yeah... I guess there's some kind of a technical reason for that. There must be, but... It's a bit weird. So, where's this plane? We can just about see the marker there on the minimap, but it's not anywhere near in range yet. Now, the reason you would want to do this, well, on land or get to the runway instead of doing this, is because here you really only have a tiny, tiny window to do this. If your shot misses, whelp. Oh boy. Now, this plane is taking its sweet time here, so at some point I just start making these practice shots to figure out the firing rate, there we go, of this rocket launcher. Just in case I miss. Nice shot. Thank you. I was so sure that that missed. It looked like it missed. Uh, yeah, I, I would not have doubted you, uh, that would miss. I have missed that quite a few times. Of course, now that we shut the plane down, the police choppers are now after us. And that's a problem, because we need to pick up the packages, which are now floating in the, in the water. And of course, we are in this boat, which doesn't turn. <laughs> so the police chopper is going to shoot at us, and that can destroy us really quickly. You know, as most choppers do. Just, just be careful. It's an enemy gunship. It, it can saw you in two, or... I don't remember how that line goes anymore. <laughs> okay, and I could have gone back to Staunton, but I decided to instead take this route. Which is... The audio having some issues there, but never mind. We have more important things to think of, such as these cartel idiots here. They look like sprites from like Hogan's Alley, kinda. <laughs> like I, th I thought you you just loaded up Hogan's Alley on me. So we have another police chopper here, and you know what that means. I probably should have just kept that car intact and used it to escape instead of doing what I am doing. Are those helicopter blades just a, a, an animated sprite? 
Um, I think there is some kind of an alpha effect going on, but I'm not entirely sure. I haven't uh, really taken a proper look at them. Oh, well, if they are, that's hilarious. Like, that, that'll get the job done. So around this point is where I thought that, yeah, maybe I should not have blown up that cartel cruiser. I thought there would be another one closer to us, but there isn't. You've made your choice. I did, and I also <laughs> thought I could kind of outrun this chopper without getting shot to bits, but it was draining our health pretty fast, so I decided to blow it up. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a, that's a, that's just a sprite. Oh, okay then. <laughs> and that, of course, takes us to six stars. Now, the reason why I did not go straight to Staunton is that, well, one, the chopper is going to be shooting at our boat and can blow it up. And um, when you get to the other side, there's going to be a whole bunch of cops or FBI or what have you, and they are going to just wreck your shit because you have to drive up the or run up the really narrow ramp hmm. from the dock. Now, I did actually manage to do that on my first attempt at this. Well, not the first attempt, but first successful attempt at this. But, of course, once I had completed the mission and went to save the game, the game froze oh, the no. instant oh. I entered the safe house. Oh, that's terrible. For a couple of seconds, I considered abandoning the LP at that point, but I did not, obviously. Uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're here. The army is here now. Just trucks for now, but there's two tanks, so... Three tanks. Never mind me, guys. Just getting out of here as soon as I possibly can. Are you able to hijack the tank? Uh, you technically can, but it's probably not recommended. Yeah, I imagine that thing is slow as shit, but... It's certainly not recommended during a mission. Well, the big problem there is that the army guys will just shoot you to bits if you try to. Fair. If you have enough health, you can probably get away with it, but I'm not taking any risks here at all. But thankfully there was the police bribe there at the airport, so we managed to at least get rid of the the army. So that just leaves the FBI. And here I just completely forgot where the police bribe in this area was. Isn't it over in the hills? It should be there in the middle of the trees, but I just wasn't able to... I just didn't see it. Like, it should have been next to those billboards. Yeah, I, I vaguely remember them being around there. Yeah, I, I just didn't see it at all. So, pay and spray it is. Of course, at this point, I completely forgot where the pay and spray in Shoreside was, because I had not played this game in many years. So... <laughs> Here I just drive right past it because it's hard to see from this angle, of course, and it's not showing up on the mini map. So this gets a little bit silly here at points. I'm almost expecting Benny Hill to start playing out of the radio. But we at least managed to come across another police bribe which I remembered actually was there from the previous mission with the death squads. Hmm. Because we drove past it. Do you need to shake off your wanted level to re return back to uh, the mission completion point? No, but I want to shake it because I do not want to be pursued by these idiots. Stop fighting in the middle of the street. <laughs> Come on, guys, go away. This is only four stars now. Go home. The, the cops sure won't recognize that you're the only person in the pay and spray. Um, the FBI car <laughs> seems to be having some minor trouble. You know, there is a there is a shop really close to there that he could go to get his car fixed. I don't think FBI cars can actually go to the pay and spray. Wait, really? I mean, no, none of the law enforcement vehicles or any of the emergency vehicles can go to the pay and spray. 
You Wait. just get told that they are not gonna touch anything that hot. Oh, uh, okay. I, I suppose it'd be a little too uh, on the nose anyway for, uh... For, uh... A recolored, um... Cop cruiser to come out of there. But anyway, we have finally made it back to the construction site. And at this point, I'm just praying to all the deities that I can possibly think of that the game doesn't crash when I go save it after this. Is, uh... Is Asuka dead? Yes. And Miguel is also dead. Well then. Yeah, Catalina showed up and took Maria and killed everyone else. So now we have to head to the cartel mansion on, in Shoreside and pay her half a million dollars. In exchange for Maria's life. Hmm. And I'm sure she will keep her end of the deal. Yeah, I can't see this going wrong at all. So, now that we are back in Shoreside, I guess there's nothing else to do but to head to the Cartel Mansion. Let's do it! Half a million seems so quaint considering how much you've got, uh, in your wallet there. Yeah, well, if I hadn't collected all the hidden packages, I would only have, uh, well, over one million. <laughs> And some pretty suitable music is about to come up, so... I'll just shut up for now. That 500,000 doesn't come out of your own pocket, does it? It does. Oh, so you can't even start this then if you don't have enough? No, you have to grunt for money. Oh, that's kind of annoying. I mean, you probably have that much, but... The real question is, did you turn up to rescue Maria or to get me back? Well, I got news for you. Shooting you will be a pleasure, but dating you was only business. You are muy pequeñito, amigo. Throw over the cash. You have been a busy boy, but you haven't learned. I'm not to be trusted. Kill the idiot! Well, who could have possibly seen that coming? Also, Claude's hand seems to be broken. I was about to say, like, is, is, are you okay, Claude? Your, uh, your hand seems to be a bit backwards. No, he's not okay because he has lost all of his guns. They took all our guns. We have no weapons at the moment, but we have the pistol that we just picked up. Well, that that's a start. Yeah, so... We have to fight an army of cartel goons without any weapons, so that's probably something that we don't want to deal with. So let's get in this car and get the hell out of here. Okay. So, so where did Catalina go? Over that way, I imagine. No, we're about to find out. Thanks. <laughs> Very helpful. Now, you don't actually have to follow the chopper. You can just go straight to where it lands. Okay. But I just decided to follow anyway because I thought it was, well, fitting. It made sense. Yeah, I mean, you might as well. So the chopper is going to land at the base of the Cochrane Dam. Which is kind of a pain in the ass to actually get to. 
and I may have slightly forgotten how to actually get that way. <laughs> As we'll see shortly. So anyway, I just decided to go back to my hideout because, well, we might as well go grab some weapons because we, because we don't have any. Uh, that's probably a good call. Yes, so if you did not collect the hidden packages, I'm not entirely sure what you're supposed to even do at this point. I was hoping that they would respawn quickly, but no. We will manage, though. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you got enough. Do you get all of your weapon stuff back after this mission's over? No, or? that is gone. Oh, that sucked if you've been, uh... Oh, Ooh. check that out. My car wasn't even smoking and I just hit the lamppost and it just blew up. Well then. I'm wasting quite a bit of time here because, again, I slightly got lost. <laughs> What is this guy doing? You're not even a cartel goon, so stop this. Instantly. Maybe he just doesn't like you. Mm, that is... That is quite likely. So here I had a great idea. I thought I would park next to these guys and use my car as a makeshift explosive, but that did not work. <laughs> and the and what also does not work is the auto-aim. Ah, oh, the best laden plans sometimes, you know? Yeah... Well, the best laid in plans, and never mind these plans. <laughs> I've wasted a horrendous amount of time at this point, and I wasn't sure if I should even go on because I didn't know if I would have enough time to even complete the mission. Oh, you actually have to complete the mission in uh, whatever time they give you there? Yes. Wow. I thought that was just get to the chopper in that time. Get to the chopper, no. No, no, no. Well, technically that is not the, um, you don't have to complete the entire mission in that time, but you have to complete the next step of the mission. Okay. But we do have a rocket launcher, and if ever, this is the time to use it. Of course, this is the usual late game GTA 3 mission, which means that we have a whole bunch of cartel goons with M16s just hiding behind all kinds of stuff. You know, naturally. Where we can't really, or where the auto aim can't even reach them. Okay, 30 seconds. Getting a little bit worried here. Yeah, so normally this thing goes airborne a lot earlier than this, but since we took so much time to actually get here, it only goes up now. And somehow I nailed that shot. That was very impressive. Also, the timer is still counting down. That, even if I do say so myself, was clutch as fuck. I'm very impressed you managed that. That was really cool. But that could not have been more dramatic. Yeah, seriously. The rest of this is not going to be all that dramatic, sadly, because we just have to be real caref careful here not to get shot by these idiots. <laughs> you think they would have just given up uh, after, you know, their leader has exploded. But they have to avenge her death. But I do love the fact that I actually have a rocket launcher this time. I have never done this with the rocket launcher because I've never had one here. Because I've never actually gotten all the hidden packages before this LP. I think I got like 93 or something like that on the PS2 back in the day without a guide. And then when I got the Xbox version a couple of years later, I got the 99 with a guide. I missed one and never found it. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, so this is the first one where first time I was actually able to come here with the rocket launcher and it was pretty good. Now the game does give you a rocket launcher here normally, but it was not going to give us one at this point obviously because we, we were so late. 
So if we hadn't gotten our rocket launcher from the hideout, we probably couldn't have well completed this mission. So what happens if you shoot Maria here? Well, that's a mission failure, as you might expect. Okay. So, don't do that. That's <laughs> bad. Ooh, that guy's sneaky. He tried to be. Now just being very careful here because I do not want any surprises. Yeah, I wouldn't want to get flanked by a shotgun dude again. I still have no idea where that guy <laughs> came from. Residents in Cedar Grove have been coming to terms with the emotional aftermath of a full-blown war that hit the area yesterday. Local resident Clive Denver described to police a single gunman that he saw fleeing the scene with a dark-haired woman. Oh, you know, we're gonna have such fun, because, you, know, you know, I love you. I, I really do, because you're such a big, strong man, and that's just what I need. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh, you know, I forget, but you know what it's like, don't you? The sound of explosions shook nearby homes as people ran for cover. Several citizens were injured in the panic as gunfire was exchanged between ground forces and a helicopter circling the dam. Yeah, we got a good view from down here in the gardens. When the copter finally got taken out, better than the fireworks on the 4th of July. With the death toll already over 20, police are still finding bodies. There have been no official denials concerning rumors that the dead were members of the Colombian cartel and still no leads as to the cause of the massacre. Can you believe it? This one cost me 50 dollars. And with that, we are done. Now as for what happened to Maria there at the end, that has never been com confirmed whether Claude shot her or if he just wanted to shut her up by shooting in the air or whatever. Given Claude, I could see that going either way, honestly. Yeah, even the people at Rockstar or Rockstar North, they don't really have any kind of consensus on that either, apparently. So something that he shot her and others think that that he didn't, so... So, yeah. So, make of that what you will. But yeah, that is GTA 3. So, what did you think? Um... It's definitely dated in this day and age, but I can, I can see where a lot of modern games game uh, design ideas, you know, came from. Right. Like, it's a neat experience. And I can definitely see where they where they built upon it to uh, give us what we have now. Yeah, you have to start somewhere, and I will say that in the, even in the PS2 sequels, they get really, well, they get a lot better really quickly. Right, right. Like, especially the Combat, which in this game was shit. Like, I'm not gonna mince words. Words that was shit. <laughs> the the lock on just doesn't work. It's, I mean, sometimes it works, but most of the time it doesn't. So that's a little bit of a problem when half the missions later on in the game require you to actually fight half of the goddamn cartel. Yeah, lock on seemed like a suggestion. Yeah. Now, I mean, on PC, it's, of course, a, a whole lot better because you at least have, like, keyboard and mouse controls in that, but it's still clunky, but at least it's manageable. And right, Claude right. will shoot where you're pointing the, pointing the gun. Which helps. That usually helps in a gunfight, yes. But, yeah, what else, what else? Yeah, GTA 3, when it came out, it actually was released without a whole lot of hype behind it. Can you imagine? That sounds so foreign. Like it took a it, it, it took a couple seconds for that to register. Just a GTA game with like zero hype. Yeah, but like at that point we'd only had GTA 1 and its expansion GTA London, as well as GTA 2, which were well, I mean they were they sold okay. The first one especially but they were still kind of niche, and they were weird 2D top-down titles, and... 
when GTA 3 was revealed, I mean, there were previews and all that kind of stuff, but people were kind of like, hey, do we really need this? Is it gonna be anything? I mean, most people were more looking forward to stuff like MGS2, um, Final Fantasy X, and stuff like that in 2001. Right, right. So then this just kind of came out without a whole bunch of, of fanfare and got these rave reviews and this amazing word of mouth. And here we are today. And here we are today. Like it was it was pretty crazy, honestly. It just came out of nowhere. Uh, yeah, it sounds pretty... Like when you put it like that, then yeah, like the, the explosion of GTA just sounds like... Just completely out of left field. And one thing that was also apparently true was that Dan Hauser, who was one of the producers and one of the writers, of course, at Rockstar, um, um, he considered actually cancelling this game after 9-11, because he did not... He wasn't so sure if they should release a game like that after what had happened. You know, I can't say I blame him for that, uh... decision. But can or, you imagine if they hadn't released this? Yeah, sorry, not decision. Uh, that, uh... Conflict. I'm, I'm sure that they would have released it, like, the following year or the year after that anyway, so... Because they had something pretty special here. Yeah, I'm sure after it would have come out eventually, but I, I can definitely understand the hesitation. But yeah, the first few years of that generation could have been very different. Uh, yeah, definitely. Right, what else was there to say about GTA 3? Do you have anything to add? This is certainly an ending theme. It's got a nice beat to it. <laughs> I, I just was not expecting it. I don't know what I was expecting, honestly, out of the uh, ending music, but... This was not it. Not that it's a bad song, but, you know. And there was the... The other song earlier in the credits and during the ending cutscene, I like that one quite a lot. Hmm. Yeah, this is certainly an interesting choice. But yeah, obviously, after this... Well, first of all, DMA Design, who was still known as DMA Design at this point, was renamed Rockstar North and officially became part of Rockstar, of course. And they were... they started work on GTA Vice City, which of course we will be LPing next. Right, right. And yet that had a huge budget. That had a whole bunch of hype behind it, like crazy hype. Yeah. But we'll get to that. After, uh... After the success of 3, I can't imagine they wouldn't have uh, threw everything out, or, or you know, at uh, the sequel. Yeah, like they have this huge voice cast of Hollywood actors and other celebrities, and... And, um, of course, the protagonist is now voiced as well. He's voiced by Ray Liotta. Hmm. And that kind of stuff. And, of course, we have the soundtrack, which is... Almost completely licensed. There are still some original songs that were added to the radio stations for flavor, but most of it is just a gigantic compilation of 80s music, basically, and it's amazing. And we'll we'll get to hear that, of course. <laughs> Excellent. But yeah, that just about wraps things up for GTA 3, as the credits are winding down here, and... This is, of course, the final video of the main part of the LP, but there is still one bonus video that we're gonna do. And... Well, you'll see what that's gonna be about. I think I actually mentioned what that's gonna be about. That's gonna be about the Dodo and the tank. Ooh. For the most part. Alright. So that's gonna be a lot of fun. So thank you for watching, and hope to see you next time. See ya!